I don't, I don't think you understand what, what's <laughs> happening. You, you came on my ship. You stole me plunder. Mm-hmm. And, and then you called parlay. No, 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 no. No, you did you, say it. I, I didn't said say the it. word. I, I did say the word parlay. I didn't. You call said, "Should parlay. we do parlay?" And that no, should we hear your parlay? But I didn't. I didn't call for a parlay. I didn't well, want a parlay. Only a fool would be on the Leviathan and not call parlay. Captain Emerald turns around and he looks to you, Kilbeck, and goes, D- "Does this make sense? Is what I'm explaining as parlay make sense? Am, am I explaining this the right way? Do, do you what? understand parlay?" I, I I mean I hear where you're coming from, um, but I didn't say parlay. You said parlay. I know uh, you, I said parlay. Yeah, but you, like you, you, you about definitely parlay. called it. Like we didn't I, say I, it. <laughs> listen here, I am accepting your parlay. What do you have to say to me? No, no, no. Forget about no, the parlay. No, I'm accepting the parlay. No, I know you're accepting. I'm okay. revoking parlay. So are we fighting? Nay, we're not fighting. What do you have to say then? He takes off uh, his uh, his hat, and as he pulls it off, you see instead of like a head or a head of hair or a skull, it is just black smoke that's swirling around in like the the space where his head would be. And he waves okay, his hat around and goes, "Look around ye." Have ye noticed it? Can ye feel it in your bones? Um, I need all three of you to make perception checks with disadvantage. Uh, Tawny, you make it without disadvantage because, uh, I'll explain in a second, but you would have advantage and it would cancel out. So Tawny makes it straight, everyone else make it with disadvantage. Uh, 11. Okay. Seven. Okay. Nine. Cool. You look around, and as you look off the boat, you realize that things do feel different. The air feels colder. It doesn't feel as humid. It feels dry. It feels cracked. The Even with the fog floating around, you, you feel the sense of, of dread and death around you. Uh, as you look off the ship, you see... The, even through the the fog that surrounds you, the sky is completely starless. Uh, just a black void. As you look into the water, the water doesn't look like water at night. It looks like ink. It looks like tar that the ship is flowing through. Something isn't right about where you are. And you see Captain Emerald turns back his single... His... his the eye that is visible is just a point of blazing green light. And as he turns to the two of you, he, or the three of you, excuse me, he says, you found yourselves somewhere between the seas of the living and the land of the dead. Damned I've been to sail the outskirts of the shadow fell. And kind of strides across his ship. And you see all the pirates, the, the specters that have been standing here, all rattle their swords in unison. Uh, to this outburst of anger. Uh, And as he kind of paces, uh, he points a black smoky finger towards Wikipedia and says, You stolen from our ship, but what need race for gold? A prize only for the living, but a debt should be paid and paid in blood. It was I one may coin. Be a... <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> it was only one coin. I it not be the coin, it be the point. It be the She's principle of it. Do you just oh. want the coin back? No, I don't need. I did. He turns back to Kildick. Is nobody listening to me? Race. I heard what you were gold. saying. They, they're not. They're not bright. You're. you're it's too eloquent. Single syllable I, words. Thank you. Ah. No coin? Yes, coin. No coin. I so we can coin? keep the coin. I, you can keep the coin. But because I don't need the coin, but you still stole from me, and so you should give something to me back. Is me point. Hmm. 
Now, because you stole from me, on principle, I should just kill you. Captain Emerald pulls out his flintlock, points it at one of the specters, shoots him clean in the chest. The specter tumbles off the side of the ship, uh, and he holsters the flintlock back into his bandolier. And says, I'd kill less just to prove a point. And I may be a bloodthirsty, cutthroat pirate, but I also be a generous captain. You can hear the rest of the specters go, Aye, generous captain, generous captain. Generous? You just shot one of your crewmates. Generous? I, you won't even let me keep one coin. I said you could keep the coin. I'm a I did. He turns back to kill that. Did I not say she could keep the coin? You did say you could. She could keep the coin. Thank you. So we're free to go. No. Listen here. Oh. So clearly, Listen. I can't just keep the coin. Uh, the yeah. coin was basically an invitation, my dude. Like. You were holding it out. There, there was no reason for her not to take the coin. However, I, I can sense you want something for us. And I, as a generous princess, am willing to make a deal. But not because we took one measly little coin. Aren't you a pirate? You should have better treasure than that. Um, Captain Emerald steps up and he, how tall is Tawny? She's almost six foot. Okay, so he he stands eye to eye with with Tawny. Um, and as he gets close in your face, you can hear the, the raspy breath in what would be his lungs. You can uh, smell his smoke, uh, the smoke on his breath and the rot in his lungs as he uh, steps like nose to nose with you. And he says, the Leviathan seeks revenge on those who have done us wrong. Um, and then on a point turns and begins to stride back across the deck of the ship. Um, he kind of motions out to the rest of his crew and goes, damned we've been. So with my last mortal breath, I curse that wretched finger wiggler and all of his kin. And I intend full well to make good on the curse. Under tonight's pale moonlight, the red wizard will suffer my revenge. Tell me, hellions of this unholy eve, will you help a devil settle a score? Or will you flee with your one measly treasure back to your mortal realm? And he motions off the ship, and this time you see through the smoke, just at the edge of your vision, is a hazy uh, version, uh, a, a hazy uh, anxious carp. You see the the ship, the anxious carp. It is just at the edge of your vision. It's blurry. You can't. It's hard to tell if it's a real, if it's a dream, if it's a mirage. But all three of you see this ship just through the smoke, um, and he gives you the opportunity to leave, or as he said, to help a devil settle a score. Settle I a score against the Red you. Wizards? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, as d- d- long d- as you admit that it's not, we're not helping you because we took your coin, but because you actually need our help. The coin and was a we cry don't like for the help. Red wizards. Um, I actually, I want to propose a trade. Forget about the coin. Um, <laughs> we we will help check you. And Tawny, pitch your idea. We will help you because no one fucking likes the Red Wizards. If you promise to tell me all you know about Tamo Core afterwards. You I've see. heard some legends about uh, Captain Emerald sailing to Tamo Core. You see Captain Emerald folds his arms and says, I, I found Tamo Core. Make, make another persuasion check. Actually, no, you don't have to make a persuasion check. He will say, I, I'll tell you everything I know about Tamo Core if he help settle this score. And Tony, I need you to make an insight check for me. And I rolled a 21 in my persuasion to convince him that the coin was just a cry for help and I didn't actually steal it. Okay, that was a 21. Tony, what did you roll for that insight? Seven. <laughs> That's your second seven of the night. 
Brandon would be proud. Um, excellent. So, Tony, you see that he does, uh, he, he agrees to tell you everything he knows about Team of Four. Um, uh, would it be, he turns to you uh, and says, um, Nay, I never admit such a thing. And then, uh, as he, um, as he, he turns from you, uh, you see, um, like, he, he, like, walks back to the, um, the helm, and under his breath, he just goes, he starts to mutter, oh, thank goodness they took that coin, I would have never, there's no way we would have pulled this off without these mortals, dear God. Um, and you, you hear that as he, he makes his way up. Um, you can tell he's trying to save face in front of his crew. Um, but yeah, he, he, it is a, def- a desperate cry for help. Um, Men and their egos. <laughs> so as uh, Captain Emerald grabs the helm of his ship and he pulls out his saber, levels it forward and goes, Avast me, hearties, to our prize. The wind suddenly, without actually moving, fills the sails. The, this ghost ship lurches forward and begins to thunder through the smoke, moving at a breakneck pace through this inky black water. You guys travel for about an hour and a half, and in this time, everyone gets a short rest. You uh, notice that as you're sailing through this fog, uh, it's very clear the difference between the depressed guppy and this ghastly leviathan. Uh, Unlike the bright, hot deck of the guppy with your rambunctious workers and your the lively tunes that kept that uh, captain the admiral is humming all the time and bug eye bustling about sawing random things hammering things together um and the the liveliness of your ship this crew is cold with rhythmic efficiency of a crew that's been doing this for lifetimes over um you hear they all start to like hum and Kill like you recognize it as an, a very old sea shanty uh, with a tune slightly different than what you've heard it. Um, and to the way they're singing it, it's less of a shanty and it feels more like a one of those like 1930s labor songs as they all just kind of hum in unison and are just working the sails and are just working the ship. Less of Again, you don't feel the life that the guppy has. You feel this is very much a cold shell of what it used to be. Um, Kildak, you also, uh, since you have been a pirate quite a long time, you uh, remember quite a bit of uh, Captain em- of hearing legends of Captain Emerald. Uh, you would know. You actually, you've probably heard of him before joining Captain Gorhan's crew. Um, his legend goes beyond just the circle of pirates in the same way that most people are familiar with the concept of Davy Jones. Um, you know that any, there isn't a piratey thing that hasn't been attributed to Captain Emerald. Uh, he's been said to sink the strongest warships of uh, either the Thayan navies or even like the water deep navy uh, any coastal city that you visited have had some legend of an encounter with Captain Emerald whether it's true or not um, it's they like to, to claim that to, to fame um, you heard stories in water deep of how he uh, slipped the gallows on the day of his execution and engulfed the whole bay in flames on his way out uh, even his legend goes as far as Wikipedia in your short, short time between your town and joining the ship, uh, making your way to Baldur's Gate, the hub of trade on the Sword Coast. You would, you've heard stories of him tricking the merchant guard into loading th- his ship with three other vessels cargo. The greatest robbery in the history of the kingdom that happened without firing a shot. Um, with the, the greatest 
robbery, non-violent robbery in the history of Baldur's Gate is attributed to Captain Emerald, who simply, with his charm and charisma, bamboozled these merchants and guards into just giving him all their treasure and just sailing away before anyone was the wiser. Um, it, whether or not it was really him, whether or not it really happened, any good pirate story can be attributed to the great attributed to the great Captain Emerald. Um, although, as you think of these stories of this great man, this great pirate, now I wouldn't say good man morally, but great as in legendary. Um, you look to this evil wraith, this black smoke seething in anger. And as he steers the ship, you can hear him muttering under his breath, going, it must be done tonight. The moon thins the veil. The tide of the shadow fell right, is, has risen. But it's, it's fleeting. I'll be gone by moonfall. And then repeats, it must be done tonight. The moon thins the veil. And just going on and on, just rambling, seething in anger. Uh, is there anything the three of you would like to do in this hour, hour and a half? before you reach your destination. I am going to like kick one of the like provisions and walk up to Captain Emerald and be like, I tried to get us beer. You ain't got nothing on this ship. Um, but how about some tails? Um, he, uh, look has his eyes locked straight ahead and says, I, you want tails from the greatest pirate to ever live. What tales do you seek? Like I said before, I want to know what your tales about Tim O'Core. And as I'm speaking, I'm going to sit like on the railing at the top of the deck thing. So that way I'm just like looking at him, like almost in his way. <laughs> just sitting he, there as he steers he, like, the helm. He has to like, he keep like trying to like, look <laughs> around you as he's telling a story. Um, and he goes, I, Teemo Kor, was me greatest discovery. I had to kill hundreds of pirates to discover its location. But oh boy, was it worth it. What, I put more loot on that island than any mortal has ever seen in their lifetime. The island was more beautiful than the sea herself. A gem of the realms. But I, the only shame is that it was the last place I ever was. Killed there by that wretched red wizard. And for that, I'll have my revenge. So how'd you get onto the island? Make Where a, was it? Make a persuasion check for me. I'm not very persuasive. Oh, actually, apparently I am. I don't know how with my negative eight charisma, but <laughs> 21. That's really good. You have a negative eight charisma? No, it's just eight. I don't know why I said negative. It's oh, a negative it's one charisma. Negative one, eight. I, I was like, oh, dude, like, what happened to Tawny? I gave her a negative eight. I too was quite shocked. Captain Emerald says, I, it, I stumbled upon it almost by accident. Uh, me ship was sailing through the waters, and we were we were led on by by a young a young girl, most energetic girl I've ever seen in my life. Just she had the heart of adventure and a fire in her eyes that I've never seen before. We we followed her to the uh, we we followed her yes, and we we landed on the island, and we. We sailed back and forth once we understood it. I, I left. I left a map. Left a map in. I, I left it in in the temple. Left it in a temple. What? Temple? And the map leads to the things. The things you need to get in. You need the same. You need anything to get in. You need a you need a key, and that key needs a lock, and that lock needs a door. And I, I hid, I hid all three. I hid the lock, I hid the key, I hid the door. Uh, I, um, and Tony, you said you rolled a 21, correct? Yes. 
with that, I I will say make it, make an insight check for me, real quick. You'll you'll get what 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 I'll, I plan on giving you out of curiosity. Roll an insight check. Is my insight check that the key that we already have is his key? No. Oh. What? Gotcha. Yes. Kill, yeah. Killed X uh, skeleton key is different. Okay. A sixteen. Okay. You realize that between your studies and when you're talking to this wraith, he doesn't remember too much. Now, as you think back to what your your studies on wraiths were um, in back back in your kingdom of Drukul, you remember that wraiths are the an embodiment of evil, an anger of malice. And what you're looking at is not the full Captain Emerald. When Captain Emerald died, pretty much everything bad about him became what you're looking at here. These are the worst parts of Captain Emerald. And because of that, he remembers things that made him angry. He remembers things that, um, that thing, violence that he did. Any, the, the worst parts, the pain, the agony, the suffering, the worst parts of life he remembers clearly, but the excitement, the adventure, those are parts of him that are no, no longer present. And so you're getting truth out of him, but his memory is very secluded to what this wraith would know, tied to the emotions that this wraith, this wraith um, embodies. Um, but you do see the last thing he says um, as he, he kind of taps the, the edges of his memory. Um, he says, that wretched red wizard, the Zulker Morzamek, thought he was the, the god's gift to Fae, if they even believe in gods. He, he made his way onto our beautiful Teimokor, our beautiful island, and he, he killed our crew, him and that bloody scepter of his he kept rambling on about and then kind of like trails off and leaves it at that um but you definitely tune in to a connection between a very powerful wizard and a scepter that this wizard was rambling about um, as he uh gives up this information uh you see captain emerald uh quickly becomes rigid. He draws his sword, waves it above his head, and says, All hands on deck! Ready the cannons! Prepare for battle! As the smoke parts in front of the Leviathan, you are greeted by a towering cliff face, hundreds of feet tall, with a violent crack that splits the cliff 200 feet wide. The entrance of this canyon is guarded by two immense serpentine statues, each snaking their way up the walls, each with three heads, each with fangs poised to strike. Behind each of these statues, you spot parapets, some sections looking newer than others and are guarding gold and glowing cannons. As Leviathan rockets into this canyon you pass a handful of merchant ships waiting in the harbor and you begin to pull alongside a hulking fan man of war as you get a better view on the inside of this canyon you can see to your left beyond the fan warship is a dock loading supplies resting beneath the uh, bricks of a castle which has been built into the cliffside. To your right, you see another castle outcropping, but this one has a wide observation window, holding within the warm glow of candles and the dancing shadows of people. Ahead of you, set into the base of this cliffside crack, is a dark and impressive city. 
black towers unnaturally rise from the ground in the cliff walls like mushrooms on a rotting tree. An eerie smoke lingers at the base of the lower towers, swirling and mixing with the shore. Strange lights glow from the windows, not warm fire, but mystic eldritch lights. And from the heart of the city, beneath the smoke, you can make out the red burn of heat, fires of industry. You are in Vorpulgrad, city of the Hydra, and the capital of the commerce capital of Fey. The boat <clears throat> explodes as cannons of the Leviathan <clears throat> uh, erupt with ghostly flame, splitting the wood uh, of the warship to your port. Uh, Captain Emerald takes his sword and points it to the uh, to overhang with the windowed overlook and shouts, There be our prize! Go, demons of the depth! Bathe the daughter of Morzamek in the moonlight so I may have my revenge! Everyone roll initiative. Oh. This place is spooky. Ha! Oh, cool. Hildak, what is your initiative? Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Uh, Tawny, what did you get? 16. 16 for Tawny. And lovely Wikipedia. A 10. A 10. You see, uh, this man of war is about one deck taller than the, uh, the Leviathan. Um, however, looking onto the top deck, you would see it is primarily manned by what looks to be Bug Eye Bill. Very similar, not quite as Bug Eyed as Bug Eye Bill, but almost identical versions of him. Uh, the biggest difference is that they do not have hair on their head, um, they all look uh, completely uh, shaven up top. Um, but they are moving crates moving supplies onto the ship uh, and then as the Leviathan begins to attack um, they begin to scramble on deck. Uh, you also notice on deck there is this hulking like black red fur uh, gorilla um, that is sitting on the deck um, and angrily begins to shout out um, commands um, actually, that's a lie. It doesn't shout commands. It begins to, like, growl and howl. Um, but it does not shout commands. Um, at the, across from the ship, you notice that there is the, um, the docks. From the docks, you see there are both more of the bug eye bills moving, uh, things that have now begun to, um, kind of panic and don't know what's going on. I mean, this ghost ship kind of appeared out of nowhere and started attacking. Um, so they don't really know what to do. Uh, as well as a couple sea elves. And you recognize these sea elves look similar to uh, the octopus. Uh, greenish blue skin, gills, um, fins on their arms and legs uh, that are also either tying knots, moving crates, doing the dock work. Um, Behind them, and on this dock, there is, uh, looks to be like a raised platform with a, some sort of teleportation circle that is there. Um, and then on the other side of you, up top, we have the observation deck and the big glass window um, that overlooks this area of the bay. So, kill it. You are first to act as we come through the smoke. Um, if you would like, you could, you may let the crew of the Leviathan act first before you. They rolled a 12 on their initiative, but if you, if you would like to wait until after they go for the first round, you may. Nah, shoot. <laughs> Excellent. Um, cool. Who, uh, who's your target of the shot? Uh, can I get a decent shot at that character right on the edge of the warship? This one right here. This this guy, yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, cool. Yes, you absolutely can. Yeah, I'll just shoot him. So, uh, you have a surprise round this time, so you have advantage on this attack. Say again? You have advantage on this shot. Oh, uh, cool. As you guys have surprised uh, the, the crew of this ship. Uh, 16 to hit. 16 will definitely hit. Uh, 11 damage. 11 damage. Cool. You uh, uh, fire the shot. On. Do I oh. get... Sorry. You do get sneak attack because you have advantage on the attack. Cool. <laughs> so an additional 10, so 21 total. 21 point. You uh, fire this shot. Uh, you see uh, this person uh, gets hit clean in the chest. They grip their chest. They double over, and they begin to try to start to drag themselves uh, down the stairs. They are mortally um, as they they clasp the ground, and they are going to be prone. Um, and you see this this huge. I mean, like seven to eight foot hulking forearm uh, person gets shot in the chest goes oh and then collapses the ground and uh, you can hear him go oh that hurts so bad and then begins to like uh, clamor towards the uh, below deck he, they sound exactly like bug guy um, oh that was rough okay you still have your bonus action and your movement okay um, can I take a hide action? Yes. Yes, you absolutely can. Yeah, I'll just uh, hide behind this, uh, bet- behind the main mast. Is that cool. okay? I'm going to say with the chaos going around, you do not need to roll. You are hidden from uh, from this crew. Um, so you hide and... Uh, Excellent. Is there anything else you would like to do on your turn? I'm good. Thank you. Cool. Tawny, you are up. Uh, I am going to, like, kind of, like, go like this to Kildak, and then turn to Captain Emerald and say, Emerald, where is your red wizard? I'm seeing a whole lot here and no red wizard. Um, he... Once again, points his sword to uh, this observation deck up here. <laughs> Kill that! You attack the wrong ship, I think. Kill that! I don't think we were supposed to hit the ship. We're supposed to go up there. Why the they fuck shot the would ship. you shoot that Neil? They already shot him. Who? Us. You. We you were did. The first to attack. We no, the ship that? already attacked that ship, did it not? We, no, the Leviathan we, is currently shooting this man of war. Yes, we're already shooting them. We came to an attack a red wizard. I don't see no fucking red wizard. I saw a red guy. He's probably helping the red wizards. Plot don't you twist. know who the red wizards are? Do these look like the wizards you know? Plot twist, uh, Kildak, completely colorblind, cannot see red. No way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, that is not canon, but how funny would that be? It's like, the red wizard. Yeah, there's, there's red as money. Tony is I don't really going... think that we should be killing just to kill because a wraith said so. You're probably right. Um... As I was yelling at Kildak, I just kind of like walked in front of him with my arms crossed and I'm just like tapping my foot and shaking my head. But so I'm also like back behind the mast and that's the end of my turn. Okay, cool. Um, cool, that's the end of your turn. Uh, next is going to be the uh, the crew of the Leviathan. You see the crew, um, each of these specters uh, like ghostly, they grab onto what would be a rope, but does not exist. Like even for the, the ghostly ship, um, and like swing onto the ship, really just floating across the the gap. Uh, and they land here. 
Uh, this specter is going to come up and take the helm, and Captain Emerald is going to uh, misty step from here onto the uh, deck of this ship. Uh, you see the the specter is going to pull the weapons and make a slash at the uh, the people on board the ship. Um, that one of them stabs the ground and finishes off uh, this kneel. At the same time, the uh, Leviathan fires another volley <laughs> into the side of uh, this ship. Um, excellent. Wikipedia, you are up. So the ghosts went over to the other ship. Yes. They killed one guy. Yep. They're still shooting. And that's about it. Correct. They are... It, so Captain Emerald looks to the three of you before he leaves and says, The battle in the harbor is just a distraction. You need to get to the wizard. Get her in the moonlight. And before he misty steps onto the other ship. So what is the distance from the observation deck to the ship? Uh, the distance is going to be, uh, it is 50 feet up and about 20 feet over. So it would take about 60 feet of movement to get uh, to the deck. Can I, are there any ropes hanging from this ship? I know it's all ghostly. Yeah, there are ropes. Absolutely. Are there ropes that I can tangibly yeah. take? Well, what are you trying to do? Trying to swing over to the observation deck. Cool. So what you could do is you could swing over to, like, below the observation deck. You can see that there's, like, a rock face beneath it and try to scale up the rock face to do that. You'd be over water that whole time, um, but that is absolutely an option. Yeah, that's. I was gonna try and like go up to the crow's nest and like jump up from like the highest point to swing over to get like the highest point that I can get onto the rock and then climb up the rest. Sure. I, uh, make a dex, uh, either an acrobatics or athletics check for me. I rolled a nat one, but I am lucky, so I can roll again, and that would be a nineteen this time. You. Uh, see that like the ropes that go up to the crow's nest you think that if you cut one of them then it will like take you right to the top and so you cut the first one and you see like the rope like whatever you cut the rope falls the other way and just like collapses at your feet and you're like oh that wasn't right grab the next one cut it and it woof, luckily takes you right up to the top um you get to the top you only use five feet of actually for the 19 you use yeah five feet of movement uh going from the ground all the way up to the crow's nest. Um, so being atop the crow's nest, now uh, you are another like 50, 50 feet up. So at this point you're about level with the uh, the glass. Um, okay, and now you want to swing- Across. Across, cool. So all you need to do is make another dexterity check for me. Um, and I rolled a 10. Cool, so you grab the rope you leap off of the crow's nest, swing down, you get onto the rock face beneath the glass. Um, with a 10, you are 20 feet down from the glass. Make sense? Cool. Uh, that is your movement and your action. Is there any bonus action you want to take on there? No. Perfect. So you guys, the two of you see Wikipedia cut the rope, sling to the top of the crow's nest, and then swing across this gap. And it's now uh, clinging to the uh, like underhang of the uh, this observation deck. Um, cool. With that, uh, Wikipedia is the Fagan's turn. You see, at this point, some of the... Uh, the Neil and the Sea Elf begin to flee. Uh, they run and hit the teleportation circle and then boom, disappear. And you see the gorilla begin to turn and start just pummeling one of these uh, pirates. Um, cool. 
at the same time, the uh, gun ports of this man of war open up, and then the cannons <coughs> fire out of this man of war. You see the cannonballs pass clean through the Leviathan, but I need Kildak and Tawny to make uh, dexterity saving throws for me. You get a plus one on that. Ooh, oh, thank you. Late. I got a natural 20 plus four, so a 24. Wow. Uh, 11. <laughs> okay. Uh, kill that. You take... You take 18 points of damage as a cannonball like sails through the ship and like through the mast and hits you, glances off of you. Um, you like dive out of the way, um, but still yeah, you are connected by this cannonball. You're actually, I mean, getting connected by a cannonball is pretty much like an instant kill. So I would say that you probably, as it doesn't even splinter the wood. Yeah, you, you get like a glancing blow. <laughs> from this cannonball. Uh, and you take 18 points of damage. Unless there's anything you want to do about it. Um, and Tawny, you just kind of sidestep it. And you, <laughs> you watch this cannonball like bounce off of Killback. Killback, you up. Okay, gotta get out of that cannon fire. Um... <laughs> Is that like so? Can I try and just swing to the base of the the rock cliff? Yeah, if you want to swing to the rock base, absolutely. Um, do you want to go to the top of the crow's nest first, or just swing across? I just want to swing across. Cool. Uh, make an acrobatics check for me. Uh, Fifteen. Cool. The DC was a little higher because you're swinging off a rope onto a cliff with only one arm, which is difficult, but a 15 passes. You <laughs> leap off and land. You are 30 feet short of uh, the rock fate of the observation deck, and you are also uh, 10 feet below with you. No, I'm sorry, 20 feet below with you. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, no, no, he's... If he's 30 from the top, I'm 20 down. It's a 10 difference. Don't I still have 20 feet to go? Yes, you're right. So, you... So, you're across, you, that uses your uh, action. You still have a movement and a bonus action if you want it. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna just dino my way up this mountain. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so, you get... You have to use half your movement to go up, so that's going to be, what's that, like 12 feet? So you get 12 feet up to 30. We'll say 15. We'll make it even. So you're 15 short of the glass. Okay, just I'll just dash. just wicked me. Cool. And then you dash, and then get all the way up, um, full, like, uncharted style. One arm, uncharted style, scale this cliff. Where you see Kildak um, just leaps past you um, and gets to the uh, gets to the glass window. Um, uh, and just so it's clear, I used my cunning action to dash as a bonus action. Perfect. Um, as you get there, you make a quick perception check for me. Uh, perception, you said? Yes, please. Thirteen. Cool. You notice uh, two things. You notice one as you see get to the glass, and you see that there is like a conference room that is uh, currently occupied by uh, like three very old mages. Uh, two of them are standing by the window, um, and as you come up, they go, "Oh, what is that?" Um, and behind them, you see a uh, like very like ornate door uh, back against this far wall um, that says uh, it is labeled Office of Zulker Um You also notice 
as you get up here, a black raven that was perched on this uh, um, this little overhang behind the glass uh, sees you, spreads its wings, and then begins to fly uh, towards the city. Hmm. Uh, that is Killer Star. Pawnee, you are up. Can I see, are there, like, I know Wicked P cut one rope to get to the top of the crow's nest. Is there any more? Yes, you could cut more uh, if you would like to attempt to cut the right one. Uh, make an acrobatics check for me. Or, actually, by the way you ask that question, you can make an intelligence an intelligence check for me. 18. Cool. You, like, analyze it. You remember like what you've seen on the guppy. You cut one, and it sends you... Whew, up to the crow's nest. Okay. Now, just just so I'm picturing this. I'm here. Mm-hmm. The platform with the glass is here. Kildak's here. And Wikipedia's yep. still way down here. She's, uh, what would we say, 20 feet down? Yes. Okay. But how far across is it now that I have the height? It's only it like 20. 20 feet across. Okay, I want to take my dagger okay. and I want to throw it at the glass to try to break the glass. Cool, absolutely. Uh, make a... Yeah, make a roll to hit uh, with your with your dagger. 22. Cool, excellent. You take this dagger and you huck it into this window. Um, roll for damage. Three. Three. You hit the glass, and you see where the the dagger, it goes, like, right past Kildak's head, stabs into the glass. Um, it spiderwebs part of the glass, um, and your knife is, is like, within arm's reach of Kildak. Um, so... But the glass doesn't completely break. With my other hand, <laughs> I want to throw my <laughs> other dagger. Perfect. Uh, make another roll to hit. Don't hit. Ten. Kodak. Don't hit. Kodak. Perfect. <laughs> another thing. It uh, hits the glass. Roll for damage. Five. The second dagger sticks in next to the first one. The spider web uh, gets a little bigger. Um, the glass doesn't completely shatter, though. Um, one of the, the wizards inside goes, Oh, s- <laughs> Harold, I think they're throwing things at us. Um, Can I call out to them before my turn ends? You can and absolutely just... call out to kill that in Wikipedia. Yes. No, the mages. Yeah, you can try. Hey, they should be able to hear you. Do you know where the red wizard is? The daughter of Morris something? Uh, you see uh, one of the, the mages turns to the other one and goes, I think these vermin are trying to speak with us. <laughs> Sorry, I don't speak. I don't speak poor. Um, and that's where they, they leave that. Oh. I clearly do not look poor. <laughs> you don't look like red, a red wizard. Uh Excellent. Uh, Tawny's turn, and that goes to the pirates. Uh, you see that the pirates begin to uh, hack and slash on this ship. Some of them float below deck. Uh, Wikipedia, you are up. Um, I'd like to use my 20 feet of movement to move up to the glass. Cool, perfect. You can get up to the glass. And I'd like, to, am I like within reach of the other knife? Yeah, you you, you have both knives like right in front of you. You and right. Kildak are standing like. I'd like to like punch the knife to try and like push it further into the glass to try and crack it more. Sure. Make a strength check for me. That is a nat one, but it's a different round, so I can roll luck again, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yep. And this time it's just a nine. You hit the knife, the spiderweb. Increases, uh, but does not um, 
completely break the grass. You can see the, this glass is like on its last leg, and the, the two mages behind are like, oh my goodness, Harold, what's happening out there? They're trying to get in. Why don't they just teleport in? I think they're too stupid to do that. They must break the glass. Um, and with, is there anything else you want to do on your turn? Oh, out of curiosity, um, since I have two weapon fighting and there's two daggers there, can I then punch the other one? Or since technically I'm not like wielding them, it doesn't. Yeah, I'll allow it. Yeah, make another strength check. And that one's a 17. That will do it. Um, you push the last one through and the glass shatters uh, into this room. Uh, you You're welcome. <laughs> uh, which be you have both the tawny daggers now. You see that this room is well lit. Um, and you see, yeah, well lit. There are only these three mages. Um, they look to have like a uh, large like chalkboard behind them, and they are drawing out like almost like PowerPoint style um, slides of a like business meeting. And you can see they're talking about like conducting trade with the. Sword Coast with Baldur's Gate, and there's also a note, uh, like a whole slide, slide chalkboard, dedicated to questions about uh, White Sands Port and the fact that they haven't received any shipments from White Sands Port and how to make compensate for that lack of income. Um, and that's what you see, like set on this wall behind this, this mage. Um, with that, that was Wikipedia's turn. Cool. Awesome. You see uh, down behind you the uh, gorilla creature uh, begins to pound one of these pirates and smashes the specter into the ground and dispels one of them. The cannons again uh, fire from this ship and pass clean through uh this the leviathan you also see these two golden arcane cannons on the side of the parapets charge up and a crackling ball of lightning <laughs> fire from these cannons and smash into the uh, leviathan which takes damage as this happens uh, the door to the captain's quarters of the ship bursts open and a uh, red wizard with, she has um, long brown hair, which goes down to like her back, um, almost down to her butt. Uh, she has these thin black tattoos that run from like her fingertips all the way back up her arms um, on both sides. And the fingertips like creep up her neck, or the, those black tattoos creep up her neck towards her cheeks. Uh, begins to cast a spe cast some spells on these specters. Um, she, Tana, you can see that she looks um, less flustered and more just surprised, but also just annoyed at the fact that she has to come outside and deal with something. Uh, with that, the three mages up top, the first one is going to cast uh, Magic Missile. Uh, they're going to cast Magic Missile on Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia, you're going to take four points of damage. And Kill Deck, you're also going to take four points of damage. As they cast Magic Missile, and these two missiles uh, fly, two hit Wikipedia, one hits Kill Deck. Um, one of these uh, mages is going to cast Firebolt, cast the cantrip of Firebolt, uh, does a 15 hit uh, kill back. A 15, yeah. Yes. Okay, so you were going to take four points of damage. How many? Uh, four. 
4. As he uh, casts a firebolt, and then uh, the last one is going to dash. He's going to dash to here, and he's going to run to teleportation circle and disappear. Um, you see, they, they cast their spells, and they just begin to flee. Harold, wait for me! These madmen are trying to get into our study. Uh, we must alert the guards. And then they begin to run towards the teleportation portal. Uh, cool. That is all the things. Bringing it back to kill the X-Men. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just run across to the to the door. Cool. You uh, book it to the door across the room. Uh, do you want to enter into more of the next study? Yes. You, you check the door. The door is unlocked. You you can enter. I'm just making sure. Yep. Yep. <laughs> cool. You crack the door open and enter. Kill that. As you enter, in the, the large desk in this room is a younger woman with short black hair. Uh, she has red robes on with spherical jewels. Uh, both uh, inlaid in the collar and along the center. Um, she has square, squared off tattoos, thick across the eyes, and rings between each of her finger joints. You see behind her, there is a huge portrait, uh, like larger than life-size portrait, of older man with a high widow's peak and thin black tattoos that extend from around his eyes and then go all the way around his head and then similarly from the sides of his lips all the way around his head. Um, at his side is a young girl dressed in similar robes as he um, and the title is uh, Zulker Morzemek and Child. Um, you see from, from the desk this woman is writing uh, glances up for a second uh, at you <sighs> sighs, looks back down and moves over to like a sending stone she has on the desk and goes Priscilla, we have an infestation of midgets, can you send a pest killer to my study please, thank you uh, and then goes back to writing uh, I'd like to pull out my gun point it at her, shout remember me Uh, she looks up. You know, Why would I remember a rodent? No idea. And shoot. <laughs> cool. Um, make your attack. We're supposed to kill this woman, right? Yes. Cool. Nine to hit. <laughs> uh, what to hit? Nine. Uh, yeah, that. Uh, you see that she uh, just puts her hand up and the bullet. Uh, stops by some magical field. She lets it drop. Um, and she sighs and says, if you please just take a seat, the pest killers will be here in momentarily. You do not have to wait very long. Trust me, I want you out of here as much as you can. And goes back to just working on her notes. Um, movement, action, do you have a bonus action you want? Can I dash over to that sending stone? <laughs> yes, you dash over. You're standing. You can either be standing beside her desk, or you can leap onto her desk if you want to be. Oh, absolutely, on her desk. Okay, jump on you her desk. Jump onto her desk, um, and are within arm's reach of the sending stone. Um, excellent. Uh, kill that, Tawny. You are up. So I have rope on me. Yes, you do. And I would like to try to like throw the rope somewhere like in the room to try to like, yeah. like, you know, lasso it, use it like a grappling thing to get over. Yeah. Um, absolutely. With Wicked Pete right there, Wicked Pete, if you would like to help in any way, you absolutely may. You just need to let me know how you would like to help. Um, Tony, make a 
if she can throw the rope over to me, like I'm still standing like right on the edge and I can grab the rope and secure it to something for her. Perfect. Uh, Tony, you uh, make a... Uh, make a dexterity check for me. With a straight dexterity. 12. 12, cool. You take it and you toss this rope. Uh, it sails across the gap um, and lays it at Wikipedia's feet. Uh, we can easily pick it up. Um, and then if you would like to wait to hold your action until Wikipedia's turn um, to or hold your movement to scale up, you can do that on Why just have, but yeah, but like I'm level with it. So I'm just like walking across, right? You want to tight a little bit. Well, yeah, you said absolutely. I'm, I mean, I don't know how I'd swing yeah, if no, I'm no, no, no. the yeah, same no, level, that, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. I was thinking you were going to like hop off and then climb it, but no, 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 that works. Cool. So then. But yes, I will cool. still wait. So you do that and then you uh, secure it to your side. Uh, make a, this time make a sleight of hand check for me. Okay. This is your not tying skills. Eight. Uh oh. Excellent. The fight continues on the thing in Man of War. Um, you hear Captain Emerald uh, pull out his flintlock and begins to um, fire at people on deck and shouts up to Tawny and Wickedby and says, The moon falls quickly from the sky. Make haste. My revenge is nigh. Um, and that's going to be their turn as they do that. And cool. Uh, with that, will be Wikipedia's turn. Right. So I'll fasten that rope for Tawny so that she can come across. And then I'd like to use the rest of my movement to follow in Kildak to the cool. room. Perfect. You fasten it. Uh, make a sleight of hand check for me. 19. Excellent. Cool. You fasten that rope to one of the uh, some sturdy. Um, load-bearing support in the room, and then you book it over to um, kill deck. Uh, I'll let that be a bonus action to tie up that rope. Uh, so oh wait, do I get an action? I'm gonna say as you. Okay. So then, before I get in the room, I'd want to use my action if you're okay. giving me one. Sure, sure. absolutely. I'd want to cast invisibility on myself before entering the room. Okay. okay. Cool. You cast invisibility, and with your movement, you get just into the room. But you okay. Are Perfect. Invisible, Tawny. You, we said you could use your movement to walk across that rope. Um, make a acrobatics check for me. Twelve. Well, cool. You, uh, okay. You begin to walk across the rope. Your balance is good. You're able to keep your balance as you go. Um, however. Once you get like three quarters of the way, you can feel the, the knot on the other side slipping out. Um, let's do this. Roll a d20. If this is just straight luck, 10 or higher, if you are able to make it to the other side before the rope slips, below 10, the rope slips, and then you'll have to make a leap onto the other side. 15. 15. You just get to the other side, and the rope slips off and then dangles down um, behind you. Uh, but you are successfully in the windowsill of this room. Uh, you can see the red wizard into the uh, through the hallway and through the, the open doorway. Um, Kildak standing on the desk, <laughs> and you hear Captain Emerald shout behind you, uh, "Get her in the moonlight!" And I will have my revenge. Um, you can see he's a very one-track mind about this. With that, top of the order, uh, kill deck. You are up. Uh, can I send a message to this sending stone? <laughs> yeah, you, I'll say free action. You can just pick it up and say something to it. Okay. Uh, in my in my best imitation of her voice. Priscilla, you can cancel those pest control. We're all good. <laughs> I love it. Make a... Uh, 
Make a persuasion check for me. <laughs> you can 13? cancel that. 13? Deal. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, you see that the, the Red Wizard looks up to you uh, flabbergasted that you would touch her stuff. And she said, give me that back, you worm! And reaches to grab the uh, the sending stone from your hand. Uh, make a sleight of hand check. He's gonna try to grab it, but... Uh, six. She also rolled a six, but she gets a minus two. So she rolled a four, and, uh, like, you just get it out of her way. She said, give me that back! And she's gonna reach a second time. Make another sleight of hand check. Seven? Uh, this time she rolled, she rolled good. She rolled a, uh, what is that? 12 minus 2. I, I guess I say good for the 12. So this is 10. So she this time she grabs it and wrenches it away from you and has, what do you think you are doing in my study? Um, and you still have a full action bonus action turn. Uh, while I'm standing on top of her desk, mm-hmm. can I like kind of like run across it spewing everything everywhere? <laughs> Absolutely. You just think you just kick all these papers away. Um, the the papers flutter across the room. Uh, she like pushes her chairs back, stands up, um, horrified that someone would do such a thing. You have this like lit candelabra if you want to do anything with that. Uh, absolutely. Can I knock that onto the rug? <laughs> yeah, you absolutely kick that onto the rug. You kick it down the rug. It, the rug immediately ignites on fire. Um, yeah. Uh, and so, like, I kind of want to run over towards this window. So, like, across the desk and, like, to the window. Cool. Yeah. You you kick it down. The rug lights on fire. And you get to the window. I'll say that's a bonus action. You still have a, an action if you want it. I'll just open the window so we don't die from smoke inhalation. <laughs> Excellent. Gildak knows his priorities. He, you uh, elbow the window open, um, and um, uh, you see the uh, this bird with a cheat gasps, and she goes, oh, "That window was worth. That glass is worth more than you are." Um, and she will go. Do Do you know who I am? You are the daughter of Zulker Morzamek. You are, you are absolutely right on the... You're, I'm the daughter of Zulker Morzamek? And you're going to come into... A dwarf is going to come into my study and throw my papers around? Um, and uh, she said, I will not stand for it. Um... Is she standing? Cool. She is standing. Looks like you're standing. Ugh! Um, and then when it's her turn, she's going to cast uh, a spell at you. But the, you are 20. Tawny, you are next. You are within earshot of all this happening. Okay. So from where I am, I'm going to turn to, because I'm like still right at the edge of the platform, mm-hmm. to Captain Emerald. And you said... Put moonlight on her? I. That be why I can't go up there and kill her myself. Can you teleport? I, anyway. I, <laughs> and she's gonna turn and she's just gonna say, okay. And then she's gonna cast moonbeam upon um, the red wizard lady. Perfect. Uh, you cast moonbeam. Uh, is it? It's a saving throw, correct? Yes. Uh, what kind of saving throw? Is Concentration. It? Uh, she rolled a. Oh, that is a nat one. <laughs> Good. I love it when I roll nat one. Cool. So she's gonna take the full damage of whatever you got. Ten. Oof. You got a 10. Cool. So it's going to deal 10 points of damage to you. And, and she's in the moonlight. She is in moonlight. Oh, damn it. 
And what's the radius on? Five on feet. Spell? Like how big is? Well, how many feet? Five. That's it. I mean, it's a five foot circle of. Yeah, you pure see the ceiling fire. almost like the ceiling magically opens up, and this uh, the moon shines through, searing her skin. She screams in pain. Without turning, because I'm not going to lose my concentration, I just want to yell with like a slight tilt to Emerald. I put moonlight on her. Um, perfect. Uh, that is your turn. Next is the Leviathan. With that, uh, you turn back out of the corner of the, your eye. You see Captain Emerald disappear in another misty step. He reappears floating directly over um, this uh, red wizard. Um, and He takes radiant damage. He will take the radiant damage. Um, so Captain Emerald is going to appear over her. He's going to he takes one of his ghastly hands and he, like slams it into the side of her shoulder, gripping like his fingernails into her skin, and he's going to reduce her max hit points uh, down so she cannot heal. Um, that's going to be his turn. Uh, Wikipedia, you are up next. I don't really know what to do because I was going to go up to her, but now there's a moonbeam on her. The wraith is right there. I don't really know what I should be doing. We did what he asked. He's actively getting his revenge. I think I'm just gonna... I guess I'll move closer in the room. I'll just take like half my movement there. Um, And can I just ready attack? Yeah, but not take it. What are you readying the attack for? Like, what's your condition to, to do it? Um... I want to attack her when there's no moonbeam, and if the wraith needs help or isn't able to like take another action or something on him. So I guess when she's just vulnerable. So I guess when the moonbeam goes away. When the moonbeam goes away, you will attack. Perfect. Cool. Then it comes to the red wizard's turn. So uh, the adept uh, Repelia is her name. Uh, Repelia is going to take a step back. Okay. He's going to take a step back out of the moonbeam. Um, as she does, she's go. Yeah, she's going to take a step out of the moonbeam. She's going to cast Dispel Magic on the moonbeam. And uh, what level did you cast it at, Connie? Second. Second. Cool. It, she casts it. It goes away. And then can um, I lunge at her then? Yes, absolutely. Cool. Uh, so you can make your attack. And you have an advantage because you're coming, you're invisible. I believe this breaks your invisibility. Once once I attack her, it will break the invisibility. So as of right now, I'm invisible. I jump from behind her. I want to kind of like grab her hair and pull her head back and put the dagger to her neck. Okay. And I mean, it's still going to count as an attack, but I'm not trying to, I'm not stabbing her with her. I'm kind of oh. just like, it's a light slice, not to like kill, to damage and to threaten. Okay, cool. All right, so you're, you are rolling an attack? Yes. All right, go for it. A 20. Ooh. She casts shield. Your attack still goes through. Uh, you can roll for damage. So I jump up, I grab her from behind, I go to put the dagger right behind her, right in front of her throat. It does seven points of damage, and I tell her, don't move. And hopefully I can hold her there so the wraith can do what he wants. Cool. Uh, you see um, she puts both of her... Um, you have a, a hand around her neck. Um, she holds up one hand uh, is open. The other hand, she has her wand out, and she's holding it like almost in submission. Um, cool. Uh, that is that was her turn. The fire is also going to get a little bigger, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that will bring us to kill Dax's turn. Uh, 
Okay. So last she last she asked like if I knew who she was. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask her how's it feel to only be known by being the daughter of someone important. No one um, knows your name. You're nothing. She is going to uh, sneer at you. Um, I don't think she's even. She probably would say something back. She's pretty sassy. Um, she. So you have this knife to her throat. Um, you see that you you see that you have struck a nerve um, with that, um, and she says, "I refuse to take insults from a bunch of midgets." And she looks back to to Wikipedia and to you. She's got her hands up. I'll just charge at her with a sword. Cool. Um, Full frontal. Bad idea, probably. I am standing directly behind her. You yeah. can. Are you visible? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, I will go to the side of, <laughs> of Wikipedia. Excellent. You go. Uh, yeah. Make your attack. Her shield is still up. That last. A uh, twenty-five to hit. Yeah, that will Hell hit. yeah! That will hit. Yes. Uh, and that's an eight plus twelve, so a twenty total. Wow. Okay. Cool. Um, you deal a this deep slash across her. Um, she screams out in pain. Um and kind of collapses onto her knees. Um, you can tell this is a, like, academic. She is not accustomed to battle. Um, this is probably the most physical pain she's ever had in her life. Um, as you, you slash her, she drops to her knees. Um, she is still alive, uh, but she is she's hurt. Does um, Wikipedia still have the knife to her neck? Yes. Um, uh, she is now like on her knees is now lower than you um, now you're and, a midget too uh, she says well at least I'm not stupid um, and there's a pretty stupid response like, I don't know <laughs> uh, is there anything else you, you have a bonus action if you want it Uh, no, nah, it's, it's, I'll disengage and back up a little bit. Cool. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Um, with that comes Tawny's turn. Where did Captain Emerald go? Uh, you see that when the moon, uh, disappeared, you can make a perception check to try to look around for him. Three. You you do not see where he's gone. <laughs> okay, and I am just because I'm so far away, um, and I can just see into the room. I'm gonna scream. I'm gonna say, Emerald, where the hell did you go? There's moonlight in that room. <laughs> do I hear anything back? No, you don't hear anything back. I guess I'll just try to move closer to the room. Cool. Uh, you are able to get uh, with your movement. Uh, you can get into into the room. And then I still have my action, right? Yes, you have an action and a bonus action. Okay. Before I do anything, I'm going to look at the Red Wizard and be like, have you heard anything about your dad and a scepter? Um, she, like, again, big cut across the chest. She's crying in pain, looks over to you and goes, who the hell are you? Friend of your dad's. That scepter? My dad didn't have any friends. Well, I mean, I was using the 
term friend loosely. We're, we're, we're more like we're beefing, but like, Scepter. Um, you see, uh, make, an, uh, make an insight check for me. Actually, can, is her shield still up? Her shield is still up. Wait, that shouldn't matter. But that was her reaction. Yes. So I am going to, um, command her okay. to tell me. Um, so I'm going to say spill as a command. Uh, what saving throw is this? Wisdom. Charisma or wisdom? Charisma? Wisdom. Wisdom, sorry. Wisdom. <laughs> That's a nat Wisdom? 20. A Wisdom, nat Charisma? 20? Yeah, she rolled a nat 20. So she <laughs> um, resists, uh, but you do see her eyes dart from you to the notes that were that kill that kicked across the room uh, and then back to you. It's very <laughs> quick when you mention Scepter, but they dash to the notes and then back to you. Uh, the battle rages on outside. Uh, Wikipedia, you are up. So I'm still holding on by her hair, yep. dagger to her throat, and be like, can you stand? Um, uh, she is, she, through her tears, goes, why would I do that? Stand. Uh, make an intimidation check. Seventeen. Yeah, uh, she stands up. All right, and I tell her to. I'm gonna like guide her to walk out the door. Okay. Uh, you begin to guide her to the door. Uh, also, like, I don't know how tall she is, but I'm definitely like only holding on by her hair, yeah. and like my back, my feet are like on her back, so you're, I'm not you're, walking. You are piggybacking. Okay. I am piggybacking on her with the knife there leading her out to the ledge. Okay, cool. You get her to move 30 feet. Cool. So she will be just outside the door. It becomes her turn. And uh, if you see as you guys exit out the door, she is going to... Uh, mutter a some words and she flicks her wand uh, she's gonna use quicken spell cast this as a bonus action uh, and I need all three of you to make uh, wisdom saving throws for me counter spell what level are you counter spelling that at third third okay she's gonna counter spell your counter spell while I have a knife to her, she's gonna counterspell my counterspell. Yeah, she's a wizard. This this is what she does. <laughs> so then you, uh, everyone needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Be at plus one uh, because you're near Tawny. Okay. Seven. Seven. Nineteen. Well, that is very unfortunate for her. So as uh, she exits the door, the fire begins to spread. She cast begins to cast a spell with her wand, which be you go to counterspell it. She counterspells your counterspell, casts a hold person at fourth level. All three of you feel your bodies begin to lock up. Kill deck. This is ah. a horrifically familiar feeling. Um, Tawny and Kill deck, you are both uh, frozen in place. Uh, you are paralyzed for the duration. Um, Wikipedia, you um, succeeded. Uh, you are not paralyzed. You resist, and you hear uh, she flicks her, spawn, her wand, and she goes, "How about you hold still?" Um, and then flicks her wand, see the spell goes off, and then uh, with her action, it's gonna take the door to her study and close it as she sees the fire like spreading through this room. Uh, so that's her turn. She closes and locks the door. Uh, Kill that. It is your turn. You need to make a 
wisdom saving throw for me. Do I still get that plus one? You do get that plus one. Dirty 20. 20 is still inspiring mm-hmm. despite being frozen. Okay, you uh, resist the, the spell. Uh, th- you will not be held a second time, and you uh, muscle out of it. Um, that is your turn, but you are, you are free. Um, next is Tawny's turn. Uh, Tony also make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, 21. Cool. You uh, resist. Uh, both of you are free. Um, you are now locked in this room uh, with the uh, carpet and now parts of the desk on fire. Um, cool. Uh, we go back to Wikipi. Wikipi, you are um, outside of the room she closes and locks the door, and um, she chuckles to herself and goes, <laughs> uh, Peasants, they think they can just come here. And it looks to you, sees you're not frozen, and her eyes go wide. Uh, your turn. Yeah, I just pull the dagger a little bit closer into her throat, into the wounds that I've already caused, and I just whisper like into here to the ledge, and I make her walk out. She takes a deep gulp and walks uh, to the, the ledge. Uh, as you get here, the moonlight fills this side of the room. And as you uh, get here, uh, Captain Emerald uh, once again appears on the ledge um, and is going to uh, take his hand, uh, put it onto like just like right over her face, drive his fingernails over her skin and uh, again reduce health. Yeah, she is hurting incredibly bad. Um, You see as he does this, she drops back to her knees, her arms drop to her side, Uh, she drops her wand uh, which rolls across the ground Um, and uh, as Captain Emerald drains life. Uh, Is there anything else you'd like to do with me? I'll say that is a but oh, I don't even know. It's kind of just like a object interaction. You pretty much have a whole turn. Yeah, I don't want to be the one to kill her. I have no beef. I'm just kind of serving the wraith and just kind of following orders right now. So I'm gonna stay here. But I'm done. Um, you take a step back uh, and watch as this happens. Who cares um, about your friends in a burning room? Um, she is going to. Look to you, Wikipi, uh, as Captain Emerald has his uh, claws on her head. Um, one of her eyes, like you can see through his fingers, um, looks to you, terror in her eyes, desperation. Um, and she goes, Help me, please. Um, is going to reach out like a hand towards you. Uh, I mean, you still have a. You didn't use any of your actions or bonus actions if you would like to do anything. As she pleads for help. Um, I'll pick up her wand off the ground and pocket it. <laughs> um, with that, her fingers are going to twist, and she goes, "Help me!" Uh, and she is going to cast charm person. Uh, make a wisdom saving throw uh, with advantage. 14. It does not take hold, and you do recognize that she was casting a charming spell onto you. Um, uh, and that will be... Her... I do charms too, sweetie. Ain't gonna work. <laughs> that will be her whole turn. Uh, going back to Tawny and Kildak, the two of you are in the room. Uh, with that, the fire catches the desk on fire, begins to blaze stronger and stronger, um, getting quite a bit out of hand at this point. Um, the two of you are in this room. Uh, Kildek, you are up first. Ah, uh, did did she say where your scepter is? No, she didn't say where it was. Weren't you in the fucking room? I wasn't really paying attention. Get the notes. Uh, all she she looked at the notes weird. That was it. Well, they're on fire. 
Uh, you Lunch actually kicked them. them off the table. So you you did an excellent job to both light the room on fire and save the notes. I don't know how you did that, but it was truly incredible. Awesome. Mr. Me did it in. Okay, I'll grab all the notes. Cool. Scoop all the papers up. Um, yeah, you, you're in this room. The fire is, is rap exponentially getting out of control. Um, what? How far is this? Is there anything on, like, over here that'd be worth something? <laughs> uh, you make your way over there. It looks like there is uh, some sort of potion that's being brewed. Um, can't really tell what it is. Uh, you can make an arcana check if you want. Is it ready? Uh, it looks ready. Yeah, we'll make that arcana check. <laughs> okay. Eleven. Eleven. Like, how dangerous could it really be? It was in a red wizard's office. It was probably for her. Like, if she was going to drink it, how bad could it be? I kind of want to just down it. Right now? Not even pocket it? Fine, I'll take it. You do you, Kay. boo. You, I'll you, dash you, over you. to this door then with my bonus action. Uh, and Ooh. I'll try and hit the door. Cool. You uh, go and, yeah, make a make a strength check for me. Six. <laughs> Six. Uh, you uh, come to the door. You see that the lock is magical. You hit the door, and you can see that despite it being like a magical lock, which is like very diff, like, you know, impossible to, you know, pick with regular lock picks you hit the door and the door um like bows cracks and is like almost off its hinges and do you have anything else on your turn you'd like to do and you pocketed that potion right yes you sure you don't want to drink it how bad could it be yeah let's do it fuck it <laughs> yes you down this potion. Um, I would say that there there is enough of this potion to be like two two full potions. So you down one full version's potion and you still have one left over. Um, Tawny, you watch as Kildak drinks this potion as like his face changes a little bit, his like demeanor changes a little bit, and for some reason you can't exactly place what is different, but right now, after drinking the potion, Kildak is far and away the hottest dwarf you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> <laughs> like, anything that you have read about in Treasured Half Breeds does not compare. <laughs> this is the hottest dwarf you've ever seen, hands down. <laughs> She's just gonna like elbow him a little bit and be like, move over, smoke show, and then she wants to kick the door. <laughs> Make a strength check for me. 14. You kick the door, the door comes off its hinges, the wood splinters. The only thing that's left connected to the wall is the arcane lock. Like the arcane lock is still locked to the wall, and the rest of the door just falls away from it. Both of you make your way into the business room again, and you see uh, Captain Emerald, who I'm not even going to roll because she, uh, Repelia only has three hit points left, um, takes a second hand, puts it on the other side of her head, um, and goes, I curse you, Morzamek the Banisher. May you suffer to the end of your days. May your blood fill the seas that you denied me. And with that, he sucks the rest of the life out of this red wizard, pushes her back, and she um, collapses to the ground, a husk of what she was left, of what she was before. Uh, looks around the room, looks to you, Wikipedia, and says, Isn't it just, isn't revenge just the best? Doesn't it just make you feel good inside? Oh, I love revenge.
to the ship. Uh, and then uh, Misty steps to the ship as everyone makes it to the Leviathan. The Leviathan um, pulls forward in front of the man of war, spins around on a heel, and then begins to uh, thunder its way out of the harbor. Um, as that is happening, the arcane cannons are firing the lightning uh the lightning orbs towards it. Um, Captain Emerald is deftly steering the ship to have the lightning crash into the water beside him. And just as you get past, you see a flash of light on the deck as three humanoid beings uh, are appear on the deck um, through a summoning circle that burns itself into the the wood of the deck. You see the first two are uh, both, one is a humanoid male, a human male, it was a human woman, uh, both with hair um, about neck length, slicked to the side, uh, and they step onto the deck. Pale skin, sun eyes sunken in, and the third figure to step out of the summoning circle uh is a tall, bald man with tattoos that Kildak could never forget, looking even more even more dead than before, even more uh, gaunt than before, um, steps onto the deck, and uh, you just catch a glimpse of him and he catches a glimpse of the ship. Uh, make a... Kill deck, make a stealth check for me. To see if, he, as he spots this ship, the Leviathan and the Carnage, to see if he spots you in particular. 18? Okay. You see, as the ship pulls off, uh, Zulker Tom, neck uh, master of necromancy, uh, called to the port to deal with a ghost ship in the harbor, steps onto the deck of the arcane ward, watches the Leviathan pull away into the harbor, and ever so slightly cocks his head as something in his mind pings, but he cannot quite put a finger on it. And the Leviathan pulls away from the uh, the scene of the crime. It quickly hauls you through the smoke, and as the moon begins to set, you can see the pirates on board begin to fade away. And as they as they do, you see Captain Emerald uh, looks to the three of you, and he says, uh, "From one devil to another." I appreciate I appreciate ye helping me to fulfill my curse. And for that, may I bestow this upon you so there is no debt to be paid. And he stabs his saber into the ground and says, If you ever need if you ever need of the most daring, violent, and legendary pile pirate that has ever sailed the 12 seas, ye need only to call. <laughs> and he fades away into uh, the mist. The last thing you see is the green, the emerald green of his eye. And with that, you are left back on a derelict ship. The You look around and you see that the moon has set the sun is just beginning to rise and you make your way back to a uh, depressed guppy that is uh, currently quivering in their boots to one of Admiral's uh, ghost tales that he's telling below deck. But nothing that he would tell would be more terrifying than what you have seen tonight. And with that, a happy Halloween to everyone back at home. And we'll see what happens next for our three pirate captains. Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.
and here the gilded voyage of our daring swashbuckler will have to lie. I hope you enjoyed me tale, and if you did, give a big old like and subscribe for more. For now, let us ponder the plunder our pirates may find, the grog they may gulp, and the scurvy scoundrels they may see in the comment section below. I'll ask ye until we meet again over another round at the Four Ring Fit.